Good morning. I'd like to share a message with you this morning that is entitled Overcoming Envy. Overcoming Envy. And I take a reading from Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 to 26, out of the New International Version. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as we gather in your name this morning, I pray that you would make this word alive to us, that we may live the lives that you require of each one of us. And so thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are present and that you are the one who enables us to live out these truths, to understand it and live it out. We ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. The devil was one day crossing the Libyan desert and he came upon a spot where a number of demons were tormenting a monk. The monk easily shook off the demons' uh, suggestions, off their evil suggestions. The devil watched their failure, and then he stepped forward to give them a lesson. He whispered to the monk, Your brother has been made Bishop of Alexandria. A scowl of envy at once cloaked the monk's face. The devil turned to his workers and said, that's how you do it. If you've ever envied someone's car, someone's house, physique, marriage, children, grandchildren, business, boat, salary, education, temperament, athletic ability, character quality, intelligence, or spiritual gift, raise your hand. Be honest now. Many people have missed God's best, their purpose because of envy. The greatest enemy of your life mission is envy. Getting your eyes on what other people are doing rather than keeping your eyes on what the Lord wants you to do. When you start looking at other people, friends, you are in trouble. Our scripture reading for today, Galatians 5, 25 to 26, is worth repeating. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited provoking and envying one another. What is envy? It is resenting God's goodness in others' lives. It is ignoring God's goodness in my own life. The Bible says that it's very destructive and it will cause much pain in your heart. Now today, I want to look at reasons to avoid envy and then I want to look at ways to overcome envy. So let's look at reasons to avoid envy. Reason number one, envy distracts me from my life purpose. When I get envious and I start looking at other people, I lose my focus. I stop concentrating on what God wants for my life and I start looking at what other people are doing. If only I had their spiritual gifts. If I only I had their heart. If only I had their personality. If only I had their experiences. If only I had their background. If only I had their money. And I get my focus off God's plan for me. And it causes me to be distracted from my life's purpose. Now, how many of you watched the Olympics? Do you remember the 1984 Olympics and how Mary Decker looked over her shoulder at Zola Bud and tripped? Do you remember that? Well, she got distracted and she lost the race and she was disqualified. Everybody had expected her to win. Would you agree that there are many things that could trip us up and could cause us to be distracted from our life purpose? All, of, all you have to do today, friends, is to turn on the television. Advertisements are designed to create envy. 
Now, reason number two to avoid envy is envy causes conflict in my relationships. Causes conflict in my relationships. When I want what you have, it's caused, it's called envy and it causes conflict. The South African culture is built on envy. We like to call it competition, don't we? In every area of society, sport, wealth, prestige, achievement, we are taught from childhood to compare. And so we compare marks or grades, marks. We compare clothes, we compare schools, we compare wealth, we compare parents. I have discovered why people work themselves to death more than they need to. It's because they envy things that other people have. And so they just keep on overworking. The third reason to avoid envy is that envy leads to other sins. Can envy cause a person to lie? Can envy cause a person to gossip? Can envy cause a person to murder? Yes, envy causes all kinds of problems in people's lives. When you're green with envy, you are ripe for trouble. Did you know why Jesus was crucified? Why the Pharisees crucified him? Well, the Bible tells us in Matthew that the Pharisees crucified Jesus because of envy. They were jealous of him. He was more popular than them. All of a sudden, all the people that were following their religious rules, rituals, now started following him. It was for envy that they sent him to the cross. It leads to all kinds of other sins. And then the fourth reason to avoid envy is envy makes me miserable. It destroys happiness. It is self-destructive. It eats you up. It will eat you alive if you do not watch our trends. Now, if you have a growth on your body, what is one of the things that you seek to do very quickly? Of course, you want to cut it out as quickly as possible. And we've got to do the same with envy. Envy will prevent you from taking the next step in the process of building your life mission. You just have to focus on what God wants for you and not what God wants to do in other people's lives. Let's now look at the ways to overcome envy. How do I cut envy out of my life? How do I get rid of it? There are five steps. The Bible tells us five steps, gives us five steps. The Bible is really clear about this. It says there are five things that you can do to get rid of envy. The first way to overcome envy is resist comparing myself to others. Comparing, you see, is the root of envy. As long as you compare, you will always find somebody else who is doing a better job than you, and you'll get discouraged. Or you'll find that you're doing a better job than somebody else, and you'll get full of pride. The Bible says, do not compare. One day after the resurrection, Jesus was talking to Peter and John. And he tells Peter, you're going to die a violent death in serving me. And so what does Peter do? Peter says, oh. And looking towards John, he says, what about John? How is he going to die? And Jesus says, in fact, in the original Greek, Jesus basically says, it's none of your business. He says, What's it to you? I have a plan for your life. What does it matter if John lives until I come back? I have a plan that's unique to you. Don't worry about my plan for somebody else. Galatians 6 verse 4 says, Be sure to do what you should, for then you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. This is a very, very important verse to teach your children or your grandchildren. Teach them never to measure themselves by others. They can have the personal satisfaction of work well done and don't need to compare themselves to others. 
It really doesn't matter, you see, friends, what their mark is, if they've done their best. It really doesn't matter if they get the award or the outstanding picture if, done, if they've done their best. And in a society where we live by competition, parents need to provide an antidote to that so that kids are not overwhelmed by envy. Don't compare. Envy is a choice. You can choose to compare yourself and get envious, or you can choose not to. Secondly, second way to overcome envy, recognize my uniqueness. Psalm 139 is one of my favorite psalms. And in verse 13 of Psalm 139, it says, you made all the delicate inward parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. You have designer genes. Yes, you do. Envy, you see, is an expression of inferiority. And it's based on insecurity. Envy occurs when you don't realize how unique you are and how special you are in God's eyes. You are unique shaped by God and nobody will ever ever be just like you when you try to be like someone else that causes envy and the antidote is to recognize your uniqueness God not only planned what you were going to be but he planned out your life for you he has a plan for it and so when you understand that do you see the stupidity of envy when God has a plan for you, you shouldn't say, I wish God had made me taller or shorter. I wish God had made me lighter or darker. I wish he had made me bigger or smaller. I wish he had made me dumber or whatever. God has a custom plan for your life. My advice to you is to focus on letting your life shine and forget trying to put everybody else's light out. A third way to overcome envy is to rejoice in what I do have. There's a myth that says I must have more than you in order to be happy. No, you don't. Another myth says that I must be like you in order to be happy. No, you don't. When you allow these things to happy that happen, then the desire to acquire begins to consume your life. You, be, you, you, become, you become consumed by your possessions. In fact, you become possessed. That's a better word. You become possessed by your possessions. Do you even realize that you can become possessed by your possessions? When you have something that if God told you that you are to give it away and you're not free to give it away, then you know what? You don't own it, but it owns you. Jesus said that a man's life does not consist of the abundant of abundance of things that he possesses. So rejoice in what you do have and don't be envious of what you don't have. Philippians 4 verse 11 says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. So friends, God says to you and me today, I want you to learn contentment. Don't try to be somebody you're not. Don't envy somebody. You're unique, you're different. Rejoice in what you do have and don't worry about what you don't have. Now we know that some single people wish they were married, while some married people wish they were single. Paul says, I've learned to be content. It's not a natural trait. Contentment is something that you have to learn, friends. Many of us need to enroll in the school of contentment. And the first lesson is this, I already have more than I deserve. Contentment is understanding that God has provided all I need for me in my current happiness. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but for today. A fourth way to overcome envy is to respond to others in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 says, love does not envy. Love you see, is the opposite of envy. You can't love someone and envy them at the same time. How does that happen? Matthew 22, 39 says, love your neighbor as yourself. Is that natural? No. 
Is that easy to do? No. Is that what the world teaches us? No. Is that what the best-selling books tell us to do? No. But it's the key. It's the key to happiness. Love your neighbor as yourself. Learn to love other people. How do you do that? Well, Romans 12, 15 says, when others are happy, be happy with them. If they are sad, share their sorrow. Now, envy naturally does the exact opposite of this. Envy rejoices when they see somebody has a failure and weeps when somebody has a success. But love rejoices with those who rejoice and weeps with those who weep. When you are envious, you miss out on so much happiness, friends, in life, because envy keeps you from sharing other people's happiness. When they have a baby, if you're envy of it, envious of it, you can't share their joy. When they get married, if you're envious of them, of it, you can't share in their joy. When they get a promotion, if you're envious of it, you can't share their, the joy either. It's only, rather, if the only time in your life you have joy is when things happen to you, then you're going to miss out, friends, on an awful lot of joy in your life. On the other hand, if you learn not to be envious, if you learn to enjoy other people's positive ex experiences, you'll be happy for most of your life because good things are happening to other people all the time. And when you share in their joy, you actually get to share that joy. You get the benefits, even though it didn't happen to you personally. And then I think the fifth and final way to overcome envy is refocus on pleasing God. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Look at life from God's point of view, from heaven's point of view. Realize that material things are only temporary. Focus on what's going to last forever. Don't set your mind on things that are going to last, in, say, 10 years. Focus your life on things that will last for eternity. When you do that, competition becomes irrelevant. When you do that, climbing the ladder of success becomes irrelevant. The antidote to envy is to be so caught up in fulfilling God's plan, God's purpose for your life, fulfilling your life mission, everything is unimportant in comparison. So as I close, I want to challenge you today not to dispute with the one who made you and who is shaping your life right now. Learn to accept what he's doing in your life, what he has given you and how he has made you. Stop the disease of envy by following the steps that are found in God's word. Start today by thanking God for all that he has given you and ask him to help you to be content. Will you pray? If you're struggling with envy, pray this simple prayer in the silence of your own hearts, asking God to help you. Father, I'm sorry for my envy. I know that I'm trying to seek satisfaction or contentment in other places rather than in you. Forgive me. Would you give me the courage and the strength to celebrate others and help me defeat the enemy, the envy rather, that looms in my heart. Thank you for hearing my praise and for loving me enough to cancel the debt that I can't pay on my own. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me today.